we're here today to talk about and remember mom and her family. She was born Valera Marie Simpkins, and Grandpa Simpkins used to remind us there's no P in Simpkins. Simpkins. Yeah. And she was born to um, Grandpa and uh, his first wife, um, Grace. And they had four children. Then, after Grace passed away of tuberculosis, I believe, and I think she was, I'm guessing, 34. Right. Um, then after a couple years, because I can remember Mom telling us about how hard Grandpa tried to get housekeepers to come in and take care of them right. and help them and, and all, but never really, you know, was she too didn't successful. Like them much. No, they weren't no. nice to her. Or no, to the kids, no. So. But finally, he met and married Corrine, and I don't know any of Corrine's background. I don't know where she was from at all. But um, so Corrine and Frank had two children: Susie being the oldest, and then Johnny. And um, so Grandpa had a total of six altogether. I know Mom went to Central High School. I'm pretty sure. Um, and I think that might be where she and Dad met. Okay, so I was born in 1942, and Dad had recently joined the Navy. And so Mom and I lived with Grandma and Grandpa Lamp at West Park. I was born in 1946, and um, I think by then they had moved to Woodlong Avenue in Grove City. Yes. And um, it was very short, ten years later, our brother was born. Because I remember Mom uh, trying to manage packing up the house for a move to Park Street, simultaneously having a baby. See, I don't remember that. Yeah. So anyway, we moved to Park Street, and... Um, that's the rest of our Grove City history. In 1959, we moved to Worthington, and uh, 250 Sandwich Circle. We moved out, Kilbourne Village. And took very seriously her role. I mean, she Absolutely. understood what her responsibilities were and her share of the the job of parenting and so on. And she was of that generation where she had her role to play and she played it and did well. Um, and then I can remember, you know, Dad traveled, mm -hmm. he still traveled a lot, and it was always such a treat that, you know, if he wasn't going to be home for dinner, you know, it was a little less stringent and a little bit more casual. You know, a couple things about mom that I think stand out, um, not only at the time I realized, but, but even now looking back at the photos, classy. Mm -hmm. Always a classy dresser, understated, mm -hmm. but um, some of the pictures of us going out as a family mm -hmm. for Thanksgiving dinner, mm -hmm. we had hats, we had gloves, I mean... If, yeah, if we went downtown on the bus to go to the up. movie theater right. or to go shopping at right. Lazarus, you had white gloves on, right. yeah, little white gloves, yeah. Right. Unlike some of the pictures I have of my children <laughs> well, <laughs> when they were that there. age. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. She also... Whenever there was a social, 
social event, I'll call it. So anything from people dropping over on Sundays, which people used to go visit. Right, right. Yeah. Sometimes not announced. Right. To hosting a dinner or a party or whatever. Right. Always just the finest touches of host hospitality. I don't know about you, but I remember mom making a very special birthday cake for our brother. It was angel food with a whipped icing oh, yeah, with and Heath, Heath bar bars. crumbles. Yeah. Did she ever make you a special birthday cake? No. Me neither. No. Okay, no. well, no. once again. Yeah, say no more. <laughs> Come fly with me, let's fly, let's fly away. One of the things I remember about mom and dad also um, and for, is that they traveled a lot. Mom went with dad every year, I will say, on his conferences or conventions for work. For work, yeah. And I think that probably, when you think about her upbringing, which was very conservative, very austere. Right. Very, not a lot of money no. at all. No. No car. 25 cents at the most was for the motor a Christ car. Well, or a Christmas gift. Oh, sure. An orange and 25 cents under their plate. Right. Under their dinner plate. And, you know, one of the questions I would love to have asked her and never did, I don't remember, is how did she think about, you know, from whence she came to this life she was leading by anybody's standards on the outside looking in was very good. Nice house. We weren't wealthy, but no. we w were well cared for. We were able to do the things that, and I think, um, I think she and dad really enjoyed that. I know they both did, and I right. know she did as well. Right. Right. So my most uh, vivid memory of mom as a young, as a little boy was uh, a prayer she taught me at bedtime. Uh, now I lay me down to sleep, I pray the Lord my soul to keep, and if I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. It scared the bejesus out of me. <laughs> I'm gonna die yeah. I get up. Kind of a heavy prayer for a two-year-old. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, there was a sense of spiritual connection. She was very devoted. We went to uh, youth group on Wednesday nights, right? Mm -hmm. Christian Endeavor, I think she called Something it. like that. And, you know, it, church was their social community and... Um, Chicago Avenue Church of Christ. Yeah, that was their, kind of their second home. Yeah. My sense about her was obviously that she was quiet, she was reserved, um, but we all can think of times when as a family somebody said something funny, usually it was dad. Oh my gosh, yes. And the giggling would begin and it was <laughs> infectious. Happy birthday to you. We got the uh, fire Happy going here. Happy birthday dear mom. We can get that over here by the time we're done. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. Yay! Wee. And many more. Oh, now she'll take it. She'll cough all over the cake. <laughs> <laughs> she did all over the salad. What's the difference? Make a wish and blow it out. I hope she gets better soon. Thank Honor. you. Ready? Another thing I remember is she was always at the end of the day resting her eyes. Oh, yeah. She wasn't sleeping. No. Right. You she come was home. Yeah, you yeah. come home from school. She's curled up in one of those big chairs. Yeah. Are you sleep? No, no. I'm just resting my eyes. Yeah. Remember, and I'm not quite equipped. I will admit, though, um, and I can now identify with this. I used to appreciate. Um, four o'clock. It's time for wine and cheese and crackers. <laughs> <laughs> That's she a was legacy. onto something. <laughs> yeah, right. Even though it was gala wine. Well, you know, it was. Or um, Mogan David, Keani. Oh, Keani. Keani. That's yeah. right. She liked Keani too. We never got any. You weren't there early enough. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So the biggest um, legacy that I think Valera Simpkins' lamp has left to our families today is when someone comes in the house or can't find someone, you, everyone lets out the signature Valera.
down Pray the Lord my soul to keep Hold me safe and warm Shelter me from every storm Oh, I wanna know Who keeps you strong when you hold me so tight Oh, I wanna know How you calm the storm Make everything right All right When I see your face Reminded of your grace Your accepting smile Helps me get to every trial Oh, I wanna know What keeps you strong When you hold me so tight Reminds me of your grace